Welcome to Comics Bazaar, the channel of comics commentary and arcana. This video features the Uncanny X-Men number 235, cover dated early October 1988. So the cover here features the uh, X-Men and they're surrounded by a group of armed men. We don't quite know yet who these are or what they represent, but we find out inside the issue. So the cover is by Rick Leonardi and inked by P. Craig Russell, who are the interior artists as well. Pretty busy cover here, needing uh, the colorist to pick out the X-Men. You can see the corner box is a little smaller than normal, um, and yet even so, Betsy's face there is um, obscured behind uh, the title. So we open this one up, and our opening splash is Welcome to Genosha, a green and pleasant land of hope and opportunity where the watchword is freedom, all of which is terribly ironic as the reader learns as they get deeper and deeper into this 22-page um, story. So the creative team here is Chris Claremont Ryder, Rick Leonardi Penciler, P. Craig Russell Inker, Glynis Oliver Colorist and Tom Orzakowski Letterer. So the story opens, it's a fairly um, action packed opening with this uh, man here and uh, what we can infer is his baby boy uh, running um, from someone or something and um, it is uh, the case that he is pursued by these um, flyers as he calls them we don't quite know um, who is piloting them but they are referred to as magistrates and he uh, jumps over this barbed wire fence um, and arrives at a plane with a kangaroo um, symbol on the tail and um, puts his boy aboard the plane and then runs off to distract uh, these flyers with their magistrates from where he has uh, placed the boy and then he is um, shot at by the magistrates and he turns around and uses his um, what, what appears to be super strength um, flinging this, uh, this wheeled vehicle at one of the flyers. So who or what could this man be? But ultimately and unfortunately for him, he's shot down and um, we learn uh, from the dialogue uh, that, uh, that the, the man was a mutant and that there is uh, somebody here called a gene engineer who's breeding uh, muties and uh, that these characters, the magistrates, are tasked with um, thwarting escape attempts. Okay, and then our story switches to Australia and we see that the baby stowed away in the jet um, arrives safely in um, Australia. Cover date there of the Times of Australia, August 5th, 1988. So around the time when this issue came out on the stands. So um, our Australian scene here um, includes uh, this trio um, who we learn are the press gang and uh, they are Pipeline here, Hawkshaw here, and uh, Punch-Out here, who's uh, super strong. And they are in, um, in Australia in order to uh, bring to Genosha Jennifer Ransom, um, who is um, a well-born Genoshan who uh, faked her um, mutant test results and fled to Australia as an emigrant. And she's working with the Flying Doctor Service, uh, for which Madeline has signed up um, to be um, uh, signed up to the service auxiliary. So she's piloting this uh, plane to this um, outback airport, where they are accosted by the press gang. Um, punch out um, uh, tackles uh, Jenny Ransom, and then Madeline. Um, throw some sand in Hawkshaw's face and she makes her way to her plane and uh, puts out a mayday message uh, to the X-Men as it turns out but her plane is lifted up and destroyed by um, Punch-Out here Madeline just barely escapes 
the explosion when the gas tank of the plane um, explodes. Then she's brought aboard um, the uh, press gang's um, plane and uh, we learn that Pipeline has the power to digitize subjects and transmit them um, to, in this case, Janosha. So he does that to Jenny Ransom, her clothes are left behind in shoes, and then he uh, is going to do the same with Madeline as well. So then, um, a little later, the X-Men turn up rogue, first of all. Um, interesting that she's able to fly past the sound barrier, so her arrival is heralded by a sonic boom. And also in her psychic uh, dialogue with uh, Psylocke, we learn that uh, Rogue has natural resistance to telepathic powers, but nonetheless the Psylink operates uh, well enough for their purposes. Um, and then Gateway sends uh, Storm and Wolverine to the location. Pretty cool effect here with Storm and Wolverine coming through this uh, portal that Gateway has opened up with his bull roarer. And then Wolverine starts investigating um, the scene using his, um, his, um, his sense of smell and other uh, tracking powers. And um, he is able to put together some of what happened, signs of a scuffle, scuffle rather, um, the hemostat belonging to the nurse that um, Madeline was flying in to this airport, but they have otherwise disappeared without a trace. This is all getting fed back to the X-Men who are in uh, the computer uh, room of their headquarters um, in their outback town. And, um, and there's a, a throwaway comment here by Ali regarding how easy Madeline makes uh, it look operating the computer systems, which uh, Havoc reacts um, a little sensitively to, and he notes himself, he didn't realize he was so touchy where Madeline was concerned. So there's a, an implication of a growing affection there um, um, uh, by um, Alex uh, to our in respect of Madeline, who is after all his brother's wife, estranged though they be. And um, then the X-Men are teleported into uh, Sydney International Airport where uh, Wolverine has tracked down the press gang and um, they, uh, Wolverine and Rogue um, go undercover into a hospital where he has followed the scent of the press gang. And then here's Punch out here and they're there to uh, acquire the baby uh, that's stowed away on the jet. So Wolverine punches uh, Punch out, she uh, punches him back and of course they don't know the X-Men and um, she is shocked at uh, how injured her hand is because of course um, Wolverine's skeleton is adamantium laced. And then she takes on Rogue who uh, with skin to skin contact um, absorbs her powers and psyche. And then gains in size. Meanwhile Wolverine goes after the other two members of the press gang. Uh, Hawkshaw um, shoots at him, but Wolverine gets the drop on him nonetheless, and then Pipeline ports in these magistrates from Genosha. So then we have a hell of a fight, uh, and uh, Wolverine and Rogue are blasted out of the hospital, and we get more magistrates arriving, so the threat level is increasing. And outside, uh, the X-Men um, note the arrival of these uh, magistrates. They don't recognize them and uh, they square off against them. And then we get this excellent um, action sequence with the X-Men taking on the, the magistrates and Colossus using his organic steel body to block the shots and protect Longshot and Ali behind. Ali using her light powers and then Storm whipping up a fog. And then um, Psylocke and Havoc uh, going into action too. Um, Havoc using his plasma blasts um, almost to kill as uh, Psylocke notes. And this is on account again of um, Havoc being enraged at the possibility that these people have hurt Madeline. Um, and then uh, we have uh, Longshot and Colossus teaming up against the magistrates here coming at them from behind. 
and over the page we have this wonderful uh, splash of the X-Men going against the magistrates and this is actually I was thinking about this this is a clearer um, image than the cover image it's more organized um, and maybe it was a possibility for the cover um, because back in the day two covers would be produced and then um, the editor-in-chief would make a decision on which one would be the um, the final cover for the for the newsstands um, and at this point I think I should make a comment on Leonardi's art and um, and what pre P. Craig Russell, the inker, is bringing to the table. Because sometimes Leonardi's art is a little bit boxy, but I feel that um, P. Craig Russell is softening um, Leonardi's um, boxiness in the art. And they make a good combination here, um, I feel. P. P. Craig Russell being a penciler in his own right, but his style is not overpowering Leonardi's, but complementing it, I think. Something else I want to note regarding the art um, is the colouring and this is a particularly, uh, uh, the colours are particularly from the flexographic process, very dotted, um, particularly in these light blues on um, Colossus's um, armour, armoured body, um, notably more dotty, uh, so to speak, than um, previous issues um, of, the, of, of the comic that I've looked at recently. And then we have uh, the press gang leaving from the back entrance of the hospital and Hawkshaw um, uh, uh, collecting or, or uh, instructing the others to collect the unconscious bodies of Wolverine and Rogue. Uh, Rogue is waking up there, but uh, Pipeline zaps her. Uh, or sorry, she's, um, she's given a sedative uh, by Pipeline en route to where he's porting her. Um, and Wolverine is sent to and meanwhile uh, Colossus and the rest have dealt with the magistrates who are all wrapped up in these um, iron girders and we have the <coughs> local constabulary arriving um, one of whom is um, Mick Dundee which is a reference a uh, topical reference at the time to Crocodile Dundee and we have the, uh, the, 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 the police thankful for whoever did this good deed, um, catching these guys. Um, and we have the eight-pointed star left behind at the scene, uh, just as was done at the end of um, X-Men Annual 12, uh, the Savage Line story. And, um, and uh, the, the, the cop concludes uh, saying to the magistrates, you're involved in the kidnapping, I'll stake my badge on that. Uh, this is the kidnapping of uh, the baby. If you weren't, you'd be uh, cooperating like crazy to prove it, which means I bet whoever nailed you is probably after the baby and them. And when they catch him, I hope those heroes give him everything they deserve. So that's our setup for uh, the next issue, Busting Loose. So this is a fairly significant um, story because it is the introduction for the first time of Janosha this island state that is incredibly prosperous, but the prosperity is built on the enslavement of its native mutant population who are tested for mutant genes and then engineered by the gene engineer uh, to uh, go into the service of the state. So the prosperity is built on racist slavery. And of course, in 1988, uh, in, the, in real world history, um, South Africa was still an apartheid state and there is something of an allegorical uh, reference to the apartheid state of South Africa uh, written into Genosha but it's more than that it is Claremont developing um, what was begun in Days of Future Past the idea that the prejudice against um, mutants um, would be such as to ultimately lead to genocide and then in God Loves Man Kills um, another important chapter in Claremont's uh, developing um, thematic of uh, using the X-Men as a way of exploring prejudice. We had it too in the Brood trilogy leading up to this, but this really um, takes on squarely another facet of uh, what way uh, mutants could be, um, could be treated um, um, unfairly and unjustly. Um, by the human population and uh, Genosha as an idea 
with the magistrates and the engineer and the press gang um, was, was and remains a very um, important contribution to Claremont's exploration of that thematic in his work. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please uh, like the video. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more content like this.